Welcome to Cosplay in the Closet. Before we begin this video, I would like to divert your attention over to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Artful Impersonator. There you will join the Artful team. I am hoping to grow this community so that it can be a fun one to get to know all of you better. There you will also find really fun awards for your monthly pledges. These pledges will help me very much to be able to buy equipment to make higher quality cosplay videos for you all to enjoy. I hope to grow these awards as well, so definitely do get on board, be a part of the Artful team, so that you can have your say in what type of awards that we have. I hope to see you there, thank you very much if you can pledge, and let's get this video started, shall we? Welcome back to Cosplay Basics! This week we will be discussing binding and tucking. Binding and tucking are techniques that are used for cosplay and personal life. I will be discussing how to do them safely, how not to do them, and how to get away with them by using things you already own. Binding is a temporary solution for flattening one's chest, and that is primarily done using a binder. There are many types of binders out there, and sometimes it can be rather daunting to figure out which style, color, and adjustment works best for you. The ones that I always tend to point out as the safest and easiest and best to use are the ones made of breathable material, and they work a lot like a compression shirt. It is generally a crop top style or a tank top style shirt that has nothing to adjust but is rather tight, but is still breathable material, and you can move around a whole lot freer with those by still getting flat. I have heard that you need to buy two sizes down, but I recommend against that. Check the sizing guide on the website that you are buying from and find your size specifically. Find that out and every size is going to run different at every store. So if you get it in the mail and it's a little too big, then hopefully they will have a return policy where you can exchange it for one size down. I do not recommend doing two sizes down because it could then be too small and cause a lot of damage. Speaking of damage, let's talk about the ace bandage technique because it is a lot cheaper and it seems to be the one that everybody uses. Ace bandages are very dangerous for many different reasons. Number one, being that they actually will start to constrict over time, which can start to cut off your breathing, even if you are not aware of it. Or it can start developing fluid in your lungs a lot faster than a regular binder. Even with a regular binder, you will start to get fluid buildup and tissue damage. But with ace bandages, you will have tissue damage a lot sooner and it can start to cause really bad cysts. And those cysts can feel like tumors over time. And I always recommend if you ever feel anything in your chest that feels like a lump, always go to the doctor just in case. Because even if it is a cyst, it could start to grow and then burst. If you get lucky and you don't get any fluid or you don't get any of the cyst, then you could potentially and more likely will get at least a few abrasions on your skin or bruising. If you get abrasions on your skin, then you need to wash them immediately and look after them because your risk of infection and staph infection is much higher in those areas, especially near your armpit. If you cannot buy a safe binder, and safe binders for me would mean a medical used chest compressor or anything that has been deemed safe with safe materials and isn't going to start to constrict over time, so anything with hook and eyes. If you cannot afford those or you are not allowed to buy anything online and most binders you buy online, if you are not allowed to do that, then I recommend doubling up on sports bras. Buy normal sports bras, maybe one size down, and then double up on them, and that should give you some constriction. This generally does work a little bit better on people with smaller chests, but it does still work in the same way with people of larger chests. If you have a larger chest, you never need to go fully flat. You don't ever need to be washboard flat. No person of a larger size will ever be washboard flat, and if you get yourself washboard flat somehow, you are going to start causing a whole lot more damage to your body and it is not worth it ever. Also, never wear them for longer than eight hours at all. Give your body a break and once you take them off, 
always put your arms over your head and give big coughs to get out any of that liquid that may have started to build up in your chest. Then give yourself a break. I know that in real life that can be rather difficult because you don't want to have to take it off or you're not prepared, so always be prepared. Take a much larger shirt with you somehow so that you can take off your binder after 8 hours. I know they say 8 to 12, but honestly even 8 is kind of pushing it if you really think about what you are doing to your body. So wear it for 8 hours and then take it off, get a much larger shirt, get something with a thick print on it so that the graphic is nice and thick and can kind of like mask and hide some things and if the t-shirt is large enough then it can mask and hide things. If it's still not doing enough then you go for the 90s style and this is actually my personal style anyway but go for the 90s style layer up and hide anything. And then at con if you need to do anything else still at the con, then I always say take two cosplays for each day of con. That way you have a backup one, one for with a binder on and one without a binder. Now let's talk about tucking. Oh, tucking. So with tucking, this happens for cosplayers mostly because of they're either trying to cosplay somebody that doesn't have that or because superhero outfits are so tight. And unfortunately for my little eyes, I have been able to tell all too well if certain heroes were snipped or not. And there are some conventions, especially family-friendly conventions, that will not let you in the door if they can see that much detail coming through your very tight superhero outfit. So tucking is sometimes very necessary. Here are some of the things about tucking. There are many people who say that if you just duct tape it up into the crevice that you will be fine. Never use duct tape. Nope, 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 nope. No duct tape ever. There are other people who will say that you use very tight underwear to put everything up into the crevice and then have the tight underwear to kind of hold it as securely as possible in. Here are a few reasons why I do not believe that is the best option. If you must, then please wear a condom. Because whenever you are tucking up into that crevice, that crevice is full of all kinds of bacteria and you have an opening in that area which could get any of that bacteria into it and the types of diseases and infections that you can get there are not pleasant. Thankfully there are antibiotics but sometimes you just never know. And with tight underwear another problem is bursting and that would then cause for surgery not worth it. So what I recommend, yes, is a little more expensive, but definitely worth it, is called a dance belt or a ballerina belt, just depending on where you look. And those are just some padded underwear, and if you've ever seen a ballerina, they can move. If you are wearing these tight, constricted underwear to try to tuck and hold and keep everything in place, you're going to realize that you don't have very much comfortable movement. With a dance belt, you will have all types of movement. You've seen ballerinas, they can do everything. And the good thing about the dance belt is you can fit any size in them. I have heard many people say, well, I'm too big for tucking, or I'm too big for a dance belt, or I'm too big for all of this. Ballerinas come in all shapes and sizes, and let me tell you, every dance belt can work. You find the dance belt for you, they will have your size, you will be able to fit, and it is worth it instead of hanging out for the world to be able to figure out every single detail of that area of you. They are a little pricey, but honestly, if you're just buying one for especially cosplay, or maybe two or three for personal use, they do last a long time. They are a lot more comfortable and safe for your body, so I highly recommend that the price is definitely worth it. Same with safe binding, I highly recommend that the price is definitely worth it. For both binding and tucking, remember that if it hurts, stop. So if you put it on and it's already starting to cause a little bit of discomfort and you feel like, oh, this is going to be a pain, adjust it, try to get it more comfortable. If you cannot get it comfortable, then stop. Even if it's just a seam that is rubbing wrong, 
that over time is going to either cut or leave a bruise or even blisters on your skin, something even that simple. But you know your body, if it is starting to feel even the slightest bit of discomfort, it will get worse over time and it is causing damage to your body and it is not worth it. Cosplay and even social standards are not worth hurting yourself over. And I know that can be difficult, especially when we are talking about the personal with dysphoria. I know that can be rather difficult to hear, but there are other ways, especially like what I said of having graphic tees or wearing layers and then for tucking, that ballet belt is great for anything. They also make other types of underwear that actually have a different type of shape to it instead of like the ballet belts just gonna look like a bulge, but if you would like to have a shape to it, they do make little nice underwear for that, which actually have that shape and it holds everything in comfortably and securely. Your safety is so much more important than an outside appearance. I understand with cosplay that yes, we are about the cosplay, like physical appearance, we're here for the photo, but if you have to do it dangerously, then do, don't do it even for eight hours. Do it for that photo or whatnot, and then immediately take it off. Protect your body. You are more important than any physical appearance, definitely. I hope that these help. If you have any more questions, then don't hesitate to ask down below. I will answer as many as I can, and if I cannot, then I am sure that there are artful friends in the comment section who would be very happy to tell you about their experiences or what they have learned along the way. But please do know that there are a lot of people who will tell you that this way is safe, that way is safe, and they probably are not. Do your research, protect your body. If it feels wrong for your body, it very well likely is. I love you all very much, protect yourself, and happy tucking or binding. Hello! My name's Cal! I like video games! S sometimes video games are scary! But that's alright, because everything will be okay in the end. I promise. Everything will be alright. Sometimes! People like to fight. Sometimes with swords. Or words. Sometimes the words hurt more than the swords. Sometimes words can be nice. Like, thanks for coming. Or thanks for watching this video. But sometimes they're mean. Sometimes being mean is fun. I was told that being mean shouldn't be fun. That's all right. We can talk about other things. I have so many things to talk about. <laughs> Thank you, little cow, for that inspiring message. Thank you, Artful Friends, for joining us this week, and oh, thank you, little cow. Please do subscribe to get the key to the cosplay closet. I will see you all next time. Bye.